last steps ahead of us is for this uh, little Kerbal project we've been working on, we've been modifying our syslog to go use Kerbal instead. So we modified our syslog client to send to Kerbal. Kerbal is now storing the files locally. Now what we can do is we could actually reverse this and now have Kerbal read the logs from a, its file store and send it on to a syslog server. Ultimately, um, there's so many different ways. This is not, I'm not trying to show a best practice by any means. I'm showing capabilities of Kribble. Why would you ever have syslog? I don't know, there's probably reasons, but why would you send syslog to Kribble, have it store locally, and then have Kribble pull from the directory? But let's just say you have a file share and you want to be able to pull from it or something like that. I can, I can make that happen pretty easily. I'm going to come over here. We're going to go to Kribble. We're going to go grab, we're going to go home, and we're going to grab a route. So we're going to get a source, well, first a source, and we're going to pull it from a system, a file monitor. And so we can put it, we're not going to put it in discovery mode. That's kind of a cool feature, but... Um, And we're going to send a sys Splunk syslog. So we're going to send this to Splunk. So discovery mode allows us to discover files to monitor. That's actually not a, that's not a bad little option. We're going to look for log files. And we're going to look for, yeah, so we'll do that. We're just going to look for anything with star.log and star.zip. Does that count for what we're looking for here? So if I go var, var log, cribble, YouTube, YouTube key. Wow, I can't type today, CD. And then we look, I'm gonna go into bucket 20. And we're going to see, we're going to look for anything dot raw. So I'm going to go star dot raw dot star. So that's going to grab any file that ends in raw. That's what I got right there. That'll work. And that, that's good for me. So if I hit save, it's actually just gonna search all my file systems. I'm gonna look for anything with logs, and maybe I don't want, maybe I actually don't want log and star log in there. But for this sake, for this example, let's put them in there. Okay, I'm good. Hit set, let's go check live. And boom, there, and I can even see the host and the host path, so I can see that we've got Cribble logs. There's our path. So if we put in, we can sort these things by paths. So they go down and have different sources and host paths. But we're good. And so I'm going to go ahead and save that. We're good. We're going to now go to routing, data routes. We're going to add a route. It's going to be syslog file monitoring because right now we got logs coming through we can see that because it's it doesn't now match so if I go file monitoring our filter will be what kind of host do we want let's go look routing data route not data. we go to data sources Go grab this uh, file monitor here. If I grab this, then I can copy it. And I'm going to come to my route. I'm going to put it here. Control V. Okay. The pipeline I want is main output. For now, we're going to set it to dev null. 
that's a bad place to put it, but I don't have an option right now. Send logs to Splunk. Save. It's not going to make it there. It doesn't really matter because it's after default. Everything's going to go through there. So what we want to do is we want to come and grab a destination. And so we're going to go destinations. We want to send it to a Splunk instance. And my Splunk instance is 192.168.10.1. Nine nine seven. Oops, that's its address. And we don't need the port because it's right down below. So on that port, we're good to go. They don't need to do anything else. We hit save. I got a main Splunk instance. We should be able to connect. It should go green in a second. All right, we're good. So now if I come to my route, I change this to refresh. And now my output, I have Splunk main, and we'll move this right up above there. Hit save. And now I should be able to go into Splunk. That's not gonna work. I need to get <sighs> Log in. Okay, I can actually check my destinations now as it's sending logs. Live data. Boom, it's sending logs out. And so if I go look in Splunk, go to Splunk here should be index equals main. I think that's my default. I'll have to validate index. There's some TCP cook data. That should be it. All right, so if I go index equals main, source type equals TCP cooked, just happened there. TCP dash cooked. And if we look at the host, there's my YouTube Cribble. Now the problem is it's coming in as you a TCP cook and then we have to look at the source. But we can see that's my raw file. Well it's not, it's a raw file. So we can go in here and under destinations, this is where we start to show some pipes. So I'm gonna come in here, just one second. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna go give myself a pipeline, and I'm gonna call it, create a pipeline, and I'm gonna call it syslog YouTube. And I'm gonna hit save. I'm going to add a function, eval, and in that function, I'm going to add a field, index equals, what's a good, what's a good index over here? If I go look at my lames, I've got a lame training. Let's go throw it in lame training. So I'm going to just say index equals. And add a source type. Cribble syslog. Just like that. I'm going to hit save. So what I've done is I've gone and said this data is going to come through and I'm going to put in an index and a source type. So if I come change here, I'll refresh this page so I can get new pipelines. 
So I'm going to change that to syslog YouTube, save. Now this data is going to come through, and I'm going to go grab a sample of it. And we're going to go capture the data. We're going to capture before the routes. We're going to save this as dev data. So now I have dev data right here. I can see what it looks like before it goes through the pipeline. Notice I'm missing an index and a source type. I flipped out. It's going to change the data. Select pipeline and that's going to be my syslog. Syslog YouTube. And the data now has that little eval. Remember, there's an eval syslog YouTube and then an index lame training source type cripple syslog. Now all my logs are having that data added to them. And so if I come in here and I go now do a search on lame training metadata index equals lame training type equals source types there's my TCP cooked. So what? Something isn't quite right. It did send it where I needed to go. It just didn't add that. Well, it would help if I typed source type in right. Source he type is not right. Source type, on the other hand, is correct. So let's go check that. Now if I go grab that data and it's now being called source type cribble syslog. Run this query again, and now I have a cribble syslog. And so just like that, I can go index equals lame training, source type equals cribble syslog. and I can do stuff like break these things out. I'll do another video about more pipelines where I can break these things out and uh, parse them and give them fields and stuff like that, like take this noise equals 92, get that stuff working. But anyway, the point is I'm able to take this data. I could stick this on an existing syslog server and pipe the stuff to Splunk. I could monitor a file system, whatever, but I have the ability to manipulate. If I have multiple file directories I wanna search, I can set my rules up in my routes, data, sources, that file collection. I have a lot of options there for file monitoring. I can, instead of doing auto, I can do a manual. And then I can put a path in there, depth I want to look. And so then I can put paths in there. Then I can use on my routes. I can assign routes using this input ID so that certain certain host logs go to one place, certain host logs get treated a different way. It's just really, really easy to manipulate. And at no stop, no point in this entire process, if I had to do a syslog ng restart, I haven't had to do a Splunk restart, I haven't had to deploy a universal forwarder on there, I can see the data. Nothing's worse than you put a universal forwarder on a syslog server and it's not quite configured right, you're not quite sure where it broke and you gotta go read logs. I can see this right here. Even my source e-type was really quick to uh, be able to be determined because I can see the stuff and what it's doing. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. I hope this gives you some ideas. I'm going to continue to put out more videos. But this was, again, this is not that you would actually do this project. Maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. But it should give you ideas. I've shown you that you can ingest syslog. You can send to Splunk. You can write to uh, files. You can read from files. You can send to uh, Elastic. You can go to an S3 lake. You've got so many different options with uh, Cribble, and we haven't even started to touch on processing with those, with the pipes, the things you can do with those in those pipelines to uh, uh, get your data all properly massaged and broken out. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. Keep coming back and watching my videos, and I hope to see you later.